Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to try out these fun glass paints and I ordered them from Amazon and I will leave a link down below and I'm gonna be painting this wine bottle. So we're gonna see how well this works. The reviews were kind of mixed, but overall they were pretty good. And I also just wanted to chit chat, do something a little more informal than I normally do. Um, not a whole lot of editing or anything like that. And if you hear any noises in the background, I do have laundry going and also um, a lot of dogs right now. So we have three dogs that are ours that we already had. And then we are fostering two puppies right now. So I will insert some footage of them because they are adorable. So here's the glass paint. The instructions say clean the glass surface with alcohol or soap and let it dry. So I do have some rubbing alcohol here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wipe down my bottle. So this paint is supposed to be different than using acrylic paints or anything like that because they are transparent or translucent so you can uh, see through the, the bottle, right? So if you're making, if you're wanting to make like a light, like putting Christmas lights inside of it or something like that. Um, you will see the design through it, kind of like stained glass. And I think I'm just going to paint some simple flowers on this one. Okay, that should be pretty good. Okay. And it says extra coating is available after last coating was dry. So I'm guessing they mean if you have to do more coats, you let it dry first. After 24 hours of natural drying, please bake the glass artwork in oven at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really um, specific for two hours and then cool down naturally, or it will take around seven days to reach the best color fastness state naturally. Okay, so I like the fact that you bake it, you kind of bake it on so that it sticks a little bit better because that's what I was worried about. Um, so you can paint on window, wine bottle, base, fish tank, ceramic, or glass surface. Please paint extra coats after the first coat of paint dried up. Please don't keep the glass artwork in water for a long time. Suitable for children above three years old. So yeah, so you probably wouldn't want to put this in the dishwasher or anything. Okay, so a lot of different color options here. And it does come with this little mixing palette so you can mix your colors. So it doesn't come with paintbrushes, which I thought maybe it would. But I do have some, like a set of paintbrushes that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then a little bit of water to clean off my brush. Okay, so I think my bottle is dry from the rubbing alcohol. And let's see, I kind of just want to do cute little daisy flowers in a bunch of different colors. So I'm just gonna, I guess, get some colors going. 
So you get this size tube and then you pierce it with that end. do purple, blue, some green, You can definitely tell they're not like totally opaque, which is good. It's like slime. Yeah, they're definitely more like gel-like and they do have a little bit of a smell, but not bad. Okay, let's do Purple, blue, green, yellow. Let's start there. Maybe white for the centers. So like I was saying before, we're fostering two puppies right now. We haven't fostered in a while. Um, the last foster we had, we ended up deciding to adopt. She was an old lady, really old. Um, I mean, we weren't quite sure how old she was, but when we got her, she was probably around 12 or 13. We had her for a few years before we had to put her down, um, but she was uh, disabled. She couldn't walk, um, which is like a common, like she had some sort of degenerative type of thing that German Shepherds get, and she just eventually couldn't walk. And so um, it was just, it was a lot of work and we were happy to do it, but we couldn't really take on anything else because that, you know, she took up a lot of our time and we loved her very much. But that didn't leave a whole lot of time for puppies or kitten fostering or anything like that. And we um, sadly had to put her down a few months ago and really haven't even thought about fostering since. But one of our friends actually uh, stumbled upon two puppies. And um, it's actually my boyfriend's brother and his wife, you know, they have their hands full already. And so, you know, they said, well, can you guys, they reached out to us and of course we said, yes, we'd foster them. And they're just the sweetest definitely uh, a handful. We've never had two puppies at once. So it's been, you know, you remember how hard it is or, you know, how much work it is, but it's so rewarding. We love fostering animals. So I'm trying to get some of the bubbles out. And it's definitely like sliding around. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just doing like some polka dots. And I think I'm gonna do that pattern and then just do like those simple daisy flower petals around that. So kind of like zigzag of dots all the way around and then the daisy flowers. And then maybe some leaves or something, but 
This might actually take a while because I can't move on until this part up here is dry or it'll like slide everywhere. So anyway, one of, a, one of the puppies is really emaciated, very skinny, um, but overall not in too bad a shape, not fearful of us at all. So they're gonna make really good dogs, I think, for whoever adopts them. And we definitely have foster failed a lot in the past. We just have a full house right now. We can't do like, we can't adopt anymore. We have six cats, all foster failures. And three dogs. Um, those were more like we've never went out looking for an animal. It just seems like we, where we live, and I'm not sure if it's like this in a lot of places, but I'm sure it is. Dogs get dumped, sadly, out in the rural areas. And so, you know, one of our dogs I stumbled upon at a gas station it was a litter of puppies with their mom. That's Tessa. Belle um, was actually a friend's dog had a litter. And um, they she was given away to some to a family. And then months later they decided they couldn't take care of her and so gave her back. But at that point she had mange very bad and I decided to keep her and she's 10 now she was my first dog that was like my dog and then Madeline our little chihuahua was um, just hanging out at a friend's house I think she was probably dumped or maybe just wasn't being super taken care of because she was like in the road and the school kids were feeding her because she wasn't getting food and um, and my friend had said like she just sleeps under their house and they feed her when they can and I couldn't leave her so we kept her and then like I said Dolly but she passed away So these are reminding me of those, the consistency sort of of the gel, like frosting. If you've ever used that, like the gel tubes of frosting to write on cakes or cupcakes or something, that's kind of what this is reminding me of. So we think one of the puppies is probably like a shepherd mix. And then one looks more maybe like 
cattle dog pit mix. Not sure. It's hard to tell because she's really skinny. But um, let me know what you guys think they are. And I'm thinking they're probably a couple months old. And it's just adorable to see them like experience things for the first time because they were obviously living outside. So when they like experience the vacuum or like our cats, you know, they were kind of like, what is that? I mean, I'm sure they saw stray cats, but you know, there was like, they were barking and like, not sure, but they, they've fallen right in line with our other dogs, you know, taking cues from them and Okay, I'm gonna finish um, these two other flowers and let it dry and then come back in with a second coat. Okay, so I added red into the mix. So I have red, yellow, purple, and blue. And I let it, that first coat dry enough that now I can probably start working on this side. I just can't lay it down, so I'll have to hold it. But I have been touching the other side so I'm going to use some more rubbing alcohol and clean that off. Okay, so I'm gonna start again with my white dots. Let's see, go here and here. Okay, and then another row of three. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing with the white, but I think you get the picture.
do this one blue and then red and just kind of make it to where the colors aren't right next to each other or the same color isn't right next to each other. I think this would be a really fun craft to do. Well, right now I'm thinking of Easter because Easter is coming up. And kids, I think, would really like it to do like a sun catcher. If you took a old picture frame and took the, the back out of it so you could just hang it from a window and see through it, see through the glass. Kind of make like a faux stained glass uh, panel. This red color is really pretty. If I was a better painter, it would be really cool to do like a rose motif. I'm just not that skilled. Painting is not really my thing unless it's very simple. Super cute. Okay, I'm gonna finish doing this around the rest of the bottle because it's basically just the same old thing. And then I'll be back. All right, so there's my first coat. I'm hoping the colors will pop out more once I do a second coat. But now I'm gonna add some leaves and I think I'm gonna do like vines and some green swirls. And kind of fill up some of this empty space a little bit more. Where do I wanna start? Oh, there's a the laundry. My dog is snoring in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that or not. Oh no. 
that's not good. I just smudged that purple flower on there. I have to keep it a little more upright. some rubbing alcohol to clean that off the bottle because it did smudge a little bit. And this green was the light green and it's not showing up too well. So I'm thinking I'm going to take that off. I'm going to mix in the darker green, Viridian. Because I don't want to waste uh, that lighter green. Hopefully that'll work a little bit better. Let's try that. What was it? My dog's having puppy dreams.
right here it is so far. I added my green. So I just did like little swirls of green and little leaves. So I'm gonna let this dry and then come back and just do a second coat over the whole thing. All right, so I waited about like an hour and a half and the paint is dry. At least dry enough, I think I can paint over it. So while I was waiting, I was, um, you know, hanging out with the dogs, playing with the puppies. And for the first time, they played tug of war with each other. Um, they didn't really get toys at first. Right, so it's always nice to see them when they start acting like dogs and playing with toys and living the good life <laughs> as dogs should, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit more paint it kind of congealed a little bit. Add a little more paint to my palette. And then essentially I'm just going to go over where I painted before. Hold on, the dog wants it. All right. Hey, Pacer. Good girl. Our dogs aren't quite sure what to think. And they get along with other dogs. But I knew Belle, um, she's kind of like indifferent, you know, just, um, she'll play when we're outside, but she's just like, she wants to be chased with like a stick in her mouth. <laughs> she wants the other dogs to chase her, but she doesn't really, doesn't go the other way with it. Um, and then Tessa, I thought she would be a little bit more playful with them, but maybe she's just not used to them yet. We had a little rescue, like, I think maybe he was a chihuahua mixed with, like, a dachshund or something. I'm not really sure, but they were best buds. And maybe it was because it was a male. I'm not really sure, but, or maybe because she was pretty young too. I'm not sure, but I definitely thought she would be more playful with these puppies. She's not being like bad towards them. She's just a little bit, I don't know, like if they get too close to me and she's right there, she'll growl or like is very protective of her food and stuff. So I, I always feel a little bit bad bringing in new animals to the house, you know, cause the current animals are like, what? Wait, what? And then your attention is kind of diverted. It's not, well, I always feel bad, but. It, you know, I want to give these animals, these puppies a chance. So hopefully they get adopted into a awesome home. It is really hard to foster and then just trust that someone else is going to give them a good life. So that's part of it. Gotta let them go. And I don't know if I mentioned uh, the names yet. 
Um, but my boyfriend, he's pretty good at choosing names. But he goes more towards what I would consider like human names versus pet names, if that makes sense. So for the white one, he chose Mabel or Maybelline, Mabel for short, which is adorable. And then for the black one, he chose Angeline. So very feminine, sort of like Southern to me, but really cute. He also named our dog Madeline and Tessa. So I named Belle. <laughs> I'm not super sold on Angeline. I just like can't think of a good like way to shorten that. Like Maybelline, you can shorten to Mabel and it's really cute. Like we've been calling her Miss Mabel. But Angeline, like Angie, Angel, I don't know. I mean, she's just super spunky. She needs a real spunky sort of spitfire, you know, name with like attitude. Oh. Speaking of, that's her barking. The dogs ran upstairs and, are you barking with them? Oh, are you barking? She's definitely the more like assertive of the two and pushy and she's getting into everything. No, that's mine. That's mine. Thank you though. Thank you. And then Mabel is more submissive. She just dropped all my paints. Hey kiddo. Okay. Okay. Good girl. Where was I? This one? So I'm gonna continue and finish doing the second coat. And then after 24 hours, we'll bake it and um, I'll show you guys that. All right guys, so here is the finished product. I baked it in the oven at 100 and I think it was 75 degrees for two hours. And then I left it in the oven. I turned the oven off and left it in there without opening the door or anything and let it cool off on its own because I didn't want to shock the glass by taking it out and the temperature um, change rapidly because that can crack the glass. But I think it turned out super cute. And I do have some, some lights here that I wanted to try out and see if we can make a little light out of the wine bottle. So these first ones that I purchased, I wasn't very impressed with. So they come with this top piece that looks like a cork and it has the battery and then the on off switch. There's only 10 lights on the string. So if you're wanting to do this with a smaller bottle, I think you could get away with using these. But in a big wine bottle, they just weren't enough light in my opinion. So I ordered some from a different company. And I'll leave the link down below. These are the ones that I didn't really like. I mean, they work. I just, they only had 10 lights. And these ones have 20 
lights on every strand. And they come with a bunch of extra batteries. And they basically look the same. They just have a longer string or strand. And then the same thing, on off switch, battery, and then that's the cork that you put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and try these out. Let me go ahead and turn the light off. Wow, that looks so cool. This is awesome. I think this would look great as a centerpiece for an event. And you can paint it with like your color scheme. And I think also doing a frosted glass first would make the color stand out more. So maybe next time I'll try etching the glass before I paint on it to see if the colors pop even more but still allow that light to come through. And look at the cool patterns it makes on the wall. So fun. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little craft with me chit chat. Uh, let me know what you think down below. And again, I'll leave the links for the products I used. And I'll see you guys in the next one.